Hey folks, this clip is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Get $30 off your order of perfectly aged steaks, juicy burgers, and decadent desserts with our promo code VOLS, that is V-O-L-S, Omaha Steaks. So on the recruiting front, it was a big recruiting weekend, had a bunch of people in, actually a, a couple of guys that you want to stay committed. That was a really important part of this weekend, and we'll we'll discuss that. And then a whole set of new guys that you want to get committed the biggest note out of that that we can start off with here was uh, the number one quarterback in the state of Georgia, Jake Merklinger or Merk. It's got to be Merklinger, right? It's not yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, Merk Merklinger <laughs> sounds a little weird, but uh, Jake Merklinger is four star kid, number one quarterback out of the state of Georgia. I looked at his uh, his info on on three. And Tennessee, at the moment, leader in the clubhouse, according to on threes, they have that prediction machine thing. It was a 36% chance he chooses Tennessee. Some of the other ones listed were Michigan State, Georgia, Florida, North Carolina. Uh, some of the stuff I read said North Carolina is probably the main contender there. Uh, but the main thing that happened that I think is notable here is that 247 Sports put in a crystal ball for him to come to Tennessee and I always say on this show those dudes that put those crystal balls in and this one was Steve Wiltfong at 247 he's, he's the lead guy over there for recruiting at 247 those dudes do not put those in unless they have a real good idea uh, of where uh, a guy might be going unless it's just super super early in their recruitment and, th and this one it's kind of in between you're not super early but you're also not you know near the end either um, but here you know those guys don't want to be wrong <laughs> the recruiting directors don't want to be wrong. So they they put that in with a lot of consideration. And so he gets a crystal ball to Tennessee. This is really interesting because you got to think he's looking and going, all right, well, I'm going to be behind Nico for a minute. Um, and so that that's pretty interesting that one of the, the top QBs is that interested in Tennessee, even with that situation. Yeah, it really is. I was kind of surprised by that. I don't know how hard George is really going after him. And George's quarterback philosophy recruiting at least is kind of odd under Kirby. I think they're going more towards uh, just find a guy in the portal and, and plug him in, which can obviously work really, really well. I mean, look at all the success that guys have had over the years, like Baker Mayfield and Justin Fields and Joe Burrow and the list goes on and on and on. So that's, it's not a bad strategy at all. I mean, but it seems like it's between Tennessee, maybe UNC uh, are the two main players there i mean we'll find out on thursday when he commits where he's going but it is kind of shocking that you've got nico obviously like you said then you've also got nico's younger brother in the 2025 class that tennessee's going after and there's a couple of other guys in that 2025 class that tennessee has high on their list as well so i mean you go get these guys if they stay they stay if they don't they don't there's it's just the world of college football now um uh, big 10 jeff also mentioned before it went away i wanted to reference it he said uh what's with the let me put the comment up here what's with the weird dude who is committed for baseball but just yeah. released the top 12 for football so i guess she's talking about amari jefferson i assume is who he's talking about that's i think so com committed to tennis ball see his football recruitment is blown up so I, if you're going to get a scholarship and play both you have to go football we'll see i mean he's not going to stay with that commitment to tennessee baseball obviously but Playing football at Tennessee and baseball is an option for him, as well as other schools. So we'll just have to see where that recruitment goes. Spring is in the air, and that can only mean one thing. Spring grilling. The steak experts at Omaha Steaks have made it easy to spring into something delicious with their semi-annual sale. It starts Wednesday, February 22nd, so make sure you mark your calendar and get 50% off site-wide. Grab all your favorites like perfectly aged tender steaks, ocean fresh seafood, juicy burgers, air chilled chicken, and decadent desserts, plus... When you go to omahasteaks.com and use promo code VOLS, that is V-O-L-S, at checkout, you'll get an additional $30 off your order. It's the perfect way to get fired up and spring into something special. Don't wait. Go to omahasteaks.com and use promo code VOLS at checkout and take advantage of this deal. I've had Omaha Steaks plenty now. Uh, comes right to your door. So convenient. So tasty. Can't recommend it enough. Go and get it. Uh, Omaha Steaks is ready to ship your order right away. And you're going to want to hurry because 50% off site-wide is only happening for a limited time. So don't miss your chance to save. Visit omahasteaks.com. 
Use promo code VOLS at checkout and get an additional $30 off when you shop their semi-annual sale today. Again, it starts February 22nd. Mark those calendars and get your Omaha Steaks. Minimum order may be required. That's Omaha Steaks promo code VOLS. Could he be a... uh, Who was the guy at... Wasn't it Notre Dame? I was... uh... Jeff Smarja. Am I making oh, that yeah. up? Oh, yeah. You know, that was him. <laughs> pitch, pitch for the Cubs. Yeah, and he was, I think he was a wide he receiver. He was a tight end or wide receiver, tight end. tight end, something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he could, uh, Mari Jefferson could be a... a I miss a the two-way Smarja guys. You know, I remember I remember growing up, Charlie Ward at Florida State played basketball, football, and baseball. Mm-hmm. There, you know, and, and I guess he went pro in basketball and played for the Knicks for a while, I think. I, I miss seeing a lot of those two-way guys like that. Yeah, it it just is so. I mean, you say even so rare. I don't know that you almost ever see it happen. Period. I think there was uh, one at LSU a couple of years ago, an outfielder well, that played on the football team. And uh, at uh, Florida State, uh, Winston. Um, oh, Jameis, yeah, Jameis Winston was he played baseball also. You know, so when Josh does. Dobbs, when Josh Dobbs committed, the original plan for him was to play baseball at Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just always football ends up getting top billing. I mean, it's the money maker. It's the, you know, a lot of ultimately a lot of those guys they want to go and play football instead of anything else. It's oh, and Kyler Murray, we're forgetting about him. Did he? Play? Well, he didn't play in college, no. But he was, yeah, you know, he was playing he minor was, league and then yeah. playing football at Oklahoma. Yeah, he was drafted. Uh, but re- regardless, yeah, that that could be cool i would love to see a dual sport athlete like that it just is so rare it is very very it seldom is. actually and happens. it's because ben hall mentions kids don't grow up playing multiple sports anymore like they used to they're specializing at eight i have an 11 year old and i've made sure that that does not happen with him you know plays a lot big in the baseball plays basketball wants to get, try something else go play football whatever you know play multiple sports find what you like enjoy the experience most of these kids aren't getting scholarship bro any so boy but you like can have a good time with it yeah that was that was always my take i'm not gonna play pro <laughs> so just gonna, if my kid has seen my athletic career he should probably give up some of those <laughs> hopes <laughs> that's the spirit <laughs> yeah uh but otherwise in, in this recruiting weekend you had jonathan Eccles, caleb beasley who are committed to tennessee they came back into town and you're just trying to keep them around you know, they're they're big class builders. They're guys that you really need to keep in. Caleb Beasley, obviously a guy for in-state who you really want to keep. And then Eccles, I mean, he's just a five-star kid. Uh, obviously, you're going to want to keep him around. Um, and so hopefully they made some serious leeway there because uh, specifically with Eccles, I mean, you're, you're facing down Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State. I, I mean, it, who doesn't want a kid like that on their team? And so you got to keep them locked down. And if you can, it's it gets you started down that road of, of another top 10 class, and hopefully they can do that. Uh, but I, I would put it this way. It'd be great to hang on to them, but losing them is where would be more of the story here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that doesn't happen, and hopefully they they made some headway there this weekend. We'll, we'll see. Kids are so temperamental as far as that goes. But that that was another story that came out of that weekend. Otherwise, it was a lot of uh, other just young guys in town. I watched a couple of the interviews. Very complimentary of everything. It, it seems like kids come and have a really great experience with Josh Heupel. They got to watch practice. Um, and, and so that's good. And hopefully, uh, I mean, this football season is going to be so huge in terms of getting these kids to Tennessee. If, if you're going to get another top 10, maybe top five class that's the honest to god truth you got to have another big season this year but as as far as it goes right now it seems like things are going well uh so far this offseason 